Now, of all the battleground states, Florida is really the biggest electoral prize, and for the Romney team, simply a must win. Well, could all that talk be a thing of the past? Because the AP uh, popping the left's balloon today, writing, Democrats are increasingly concerned that Florida, once the nation's premier swing state, now may slip away this fall and become as emboldened Republicans capitalize on divisive cultural issues and population shifts in crucial contests for governor and the U.S. Senate. Joining me now is Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, good to see you tonight. Um, I guess you're just merely capitalizing on divisive cultural issues. Oh, come on. Is it bigger than that in Florida? Well, the people watching this broadcast and, and those that vote in the state are the ones that decide what direction it goes. Here's one of the things that's happened among many. What's happened is that Hispanic voters that for years we've been told they only care about immigration, this is what they care about, this is the only thing they care about, they do care about immigration. And primarily what we're seeing is they care about illegal immigration. They care about a border that's out of control. They care about the fentanyl that's coming across the border. In essence, if you look at sort of, and I'm not just calling polling, I'm anecdotally, I, I live in a Hispanic community, surrounded in this, by, in, by, by people in this community that I live here in Miami in, are increasingly indistinguishable from non-Hispanic working class voters and small business owners. They care about the exact same things. They want schools to teach, not indoctrinate. They want our, uh, the laws to be enforced. They don't want criminals running loose. Um, and, and these are the kinds of things that I think, uh, and, and, and not to mention we have a lot of people that know that socialism and Marxism doesn't work and they recognize it when they see it. So all these things have combined as just one factor. The other is, frankly, a lot of people have moved here because they'd hate what's happening in New York and in California and in Illinois and other places. And they certainly didn't move here in order to ruin this state and make it look like the state they came from. So a combination of these factors and some of the national trends you're seeing, I think, are contributing to that. But ultimately, I would say it's, it's up to voters. We're going to find out here two weeks from tomorrow night exactly how far Florida has moved. I feel very optimistic if the people watching get out and vote and don't take it for granted. Senator, there are a lot of people right now who are just afraid. They're afraid of what's happening to this country. They're afraid of crime. They're afraid their life savings is slipping away, their 401ks, you know, declining in, in value. What do you say to them tonight about what Republicans in the Senate, if indeed Republicans retake the Senate, could do in the next few years? Well, you know, I share those exact concerns. It's the reason why I'm running for re-election. I think if the people that are in charge of the House, the Senate, and the White House, if they remain in power, they are going to destroy this country. They're going to destroy it through a number of things. So the first thing we have to do is we are a nation that's been blessed with energy resources. And I know, you know, people maybe get tired of hearing about it, but the truth of the matter is the cost of energy is the fundamental underlying basic underlying cost of everything. When that goes up, everything goes up. We have depleted our strategic reserves. We're begging the Saudis to produce more oil. We're trying to but cut Senator, deals with Iran and Venezuela. Yeah, I agree so with you on all one. that. But what are you guys going to do? If you guys get control of the, well, the Senate, my concern is that Republicans get control and then is there a plan in place to really make this affirmative case to the people and move forward legislation that Joe Biden is going to have to either agree to or veto? Well, that, that, I would put that into three buckets or three directions that we need to move at the same time. Number one is we have to stop bad things from happening. Crazy people from getting into positions of power in the Senate, we have that power and so forth. And I think just the election alone brings an end to some of that insanity. The second is we have to make good things happen, like energy independence, like ensuring that federal laws are not interfering with, with decisions that are being made at the state level, at the school board levels, and things of that nature. We need to pass those bills, both on energy and on things like education and the like, and crime for that matter, and then challenge the Biden administration to veto it, to stand in the way of something that's popular. That's the second piece. And the third is accountability. We have to use our oversight role that we have to now, we should have hearings, for example, on the riots of the summer of 2020. There's been no accountability about the summer of 2020, who was behind it, how much did the political rhetoric lend itself to it. How, for example, these efforts to bail people out of jail in 2020, how many people did that encourage to come back out and do that all over again? What about these pro-life pregnancy centers that are being firebombed across the country? There's been no examination into that. So there's a host of things like that that we can hold government agencies accountable for, and that includes the border. They, these guys love to come up and testify about, well, the border is secure. I actually think that we have a role to play in Congress to hold them accountable for that. So the accountability piece, 
the passing good things and challenging him to sign it or, or veto it and pay the consequences and the keeping crazy people out of these uh, positions, both on the bench and in the bureaucracy, are three key areas that we can, even without the White House, we can immediately begin to put this country in the right direction. And is the same for the woke military policies that are being put in place throughout our armed forces? Same for that? I think that's part of the oversight. I think you have these hearings where you basically ask, why are we spending all of our time putting well, up we productions shouldn't be and videos it. about the... Well, absolutely. But more than that, you need to hold these people accountable, especially the civilian leadership at the Pentagon. Why are we putting out these videos on the proper use of pronouns? We should be worried about the Chinese wanting to blow up our aircraft carriers. Yeah. We should be worried about their hypersonic weapons. We should be worried about the threat of global terror, which still exists. We should be worried about the 80-something people on the terror watch list that have been apprehended at the southern border over the last year, a historic number. And those are the ones we caught. Yeah. Usually, if you're on the terror watch list, you don't turn yourself in. Yeah, well, Senator, we are watching this race very closely. You have a decent lead, but as you said, nothing can be taken for granted in Florida or anywhere, any state in the country. We wish you the best of luck out there. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.